Hi everyone, in this video, look at how to customize the landing page of a PFSense captive portal using HTML code readily available on GitHub. GitHub is an online platform which allows individuals to collaborate and share software code. And in this video, I'll show you how to download relevant HTML code and edit them to see the landing page for a PFSense captive portal. So this is how the PFSense landing page usually looks like. It's very simple and basic. However, I'll show you how to import relevant HTML code, which will transform it to look more like this. So this is an example of how the HTML code will look like. Once we download them from GitHub, we may edit a line or two and then import them into our PFSense captive portal page. And this is an example of an HTML code shared by a GitHub user. So in this video, I'll walk you through how to download this into a Linux virtual machine, edit it using a text editor, and then import it into a PFSense captive portal. So let's get started by navigating into the configuration page of a PFSense captive portal. To get started, you'd want to have the PFSense firewall installed and configured. And you'd want to have at least one client machine, either running a Linux or Windows operating system. In this particular video, I would use the Linux Ubuntu and the Windows 10 virtual machine. So the first thing you'd want to ensure is that the PSN's firewall is running on the same network with the virtual machines that will be accessing the internet. The PFSense firewall will also act as a router and will issue IP address to these virtual machines. So it will have the DHCP server installed on the PFSense firewall. However, you'd want to ensure that the PFSense firewall has two network interface cards, one allowing access to the one network or using the host machine's network to connect to the internet. And the other network interface card will be issuing IP addresses to virtual machines on its internal network allowing them to access the internet through the PSN's router. So to confirm these configurations, the first thing you'd want to do is to highlight the virtual machine. Ideally, they should be powered off before you can make configuration changes to the network. In this case, I'm already running them. However, if you are supposed to make changes, you should ensure they are powered off. So once you highlight that virtual machine, you go to settings and then you go to network. So in network, for the PSN's firewall, you have two network adapters enabled. You have one set to bridged adapter, as you see in here, and this will access your host machine's internet. You should ensure that with your host machine, you have access to the internet. And you should have a second network interface card, and it should be set to internal network. You can name it however you want. However, you should ensure that all other virtual machines that are expected to access the captive portal are configured to have the same internal network. So once this is done, you go to the other virtual machine that will be accessing the captive portal. So in this case, let's highlight the Ubuntu virtual machine, go to settings, and in settings, again, we go to network, and in here, we'll just enable one adapter and set it to internal network and then ensure that it has the same name as you configured for the PFSense firewall and you click on OK. And in my case, because I would want to use another virtual machine, let's do the same for the Windows. You highlight it, go to settings, and then you go to network and then ensure that it has the same internal network name and set to the same adapter and click on OK. So once this is done, you would power on your virtual machine, starting with a PFSense firewall. So once your PFSense firewall boots, you should have a console interface like this with options. And two things are very important. You should have a WAN connection with an IP address and a LAN connection, which is normally a static IP address. And if you have any of these being blank, it either would mean you have not assigned interfaces or an IP address. In the case of a one, it should be assigned DHCP, it should automatically be receiving an IP address from your host machine. And for the LAN, you have to set a static IP, which you would input in your browser to access the web graphical user interface. 
So in the previous video, I explained how to set up your PFSense firewall. You may access this with a pop-up on the top right corner of your screen. So at this point, you would use your static LAN IP address to access the web configurator or the graphical user interface of the PFSense firewall, where we'll configure the captive portal. So let's head onto our Ubuntu virtual machine and open Firefox and enter this IP address, which is 192.168.1.1. So just before we head into our Ubuntu virtual machine, I think it will be good to take a snapshot of this current point in time of our PSN's firewall, just in case anything goes wrong when we make changes to the firewall. So what we'll do is we'll go to machine, We'll go to take snapshots and we'll give a snapshot a name. You can probably just leave it as its default name. You can decide to say um, snapshot before changes to firewall. And then you can click on OK. So you'd see at the top that it will start taking that snapshot. And once it saves, you are good to go. So at this point, let's head into a Ubuntu virtual machine. So on this Ubuntu virtual machine, we'll go to Firefox and we'll enter the IP address, which is 192.168.1.1 and then click on enter. And in here, you'd have to enter your admin. If you've changed your default password, you'd have to enter the new password and click on sign in. So once you sign in, you'd have the dashboard of the firewall. And before we proceed to configure the captive portal, we should ensure that the one network is working in the LAN network. The other thing is to ensure that on the LAN network, you have DHCP server configured. So you should ensure that the virtual machines connected to the LAN can receive IP addresses through the DHCP server. So to configure this or to confirm if DHCP is enabled, you go to services at the top and then you go to DHCP server. So in here, you should ensure that the DHCP server is enabled on the LAN interface. You should also ensure that a subnet mask and a subnet is assigned as well as an IP range. So once you've confirmed these, we can proceed to configure the captive portal. So to configure the captive portal, we'll go to services again, and this time we'll choose captive portal. So in here, you click on add and you set a zone name. So you should follow these parameters. You shouldn't have any spaces. It should just be letters, digits, and an underscore. So we can say guest network and zone description, you can say network for guests and save and continue. So in here, the first thing you'd want to do is to enable captive portal and you'd want to set the interface to LAN. And these other parameters might be um, preference according to preference. So if you want to have a maximum current and co um, concurrent connections, you can set that. Um, idle timeout, the number of minutes after which clients will be disconnected after inactivity or following inactivity. You can set hard timeout after that period has elapsed, all connections will be disconnected. You can even set a traffic quota where um, clients are not supposed to exceed an amount of traffic, either downloads or uploads. Um, you can set that in megabytes. But for now, we'll skip most of these parameters. And what we would really want to focus on is how the captive portal page looks like. And so we would want to set it to a custom one. We don't want to use the default PSN's captive portal. And so we will enable, we'll check this, enable to use cap, uh, custom captive portal login page. And it brings up additional parameters here. So we would want to set an HTML um, 
portal page. So you'd have to upload an HTML file on how you want the portal page to look like, how the captive portal page will look like. You'd want to also set one for authentication error. So if there's an error, how should that error be displayed on the captive portal? And once you are done and you log out, how should the page look like? So at this point, we'll head on to GitHub. There are a few templates that we can use, we can tweak. And so I would walk you through an example We'll download an HTML file. You can also use a PHP file if you have one. You can even design this on your own if you have some knowledge and skill when it comes to HTML or PHP designing. Okay, so we'll open another tab and we'll enter this GitHub page. I'll leave the link in the description. So this particular HTML file will adopt was publicly made available by Cobalt, that's David Kimura, a GitHub user. So when you scroll down, he talks about um, some of the themes, how to install. So in here, he has made available two themes you can select. So if you click on Vanilla, the example, you can see how the captive portal will look. So you'd have your username with some description at the top and the terms of use. You can decide to edit this or tweak this to, to suit what you would want. Or you can adopt a second one here. We have the as mind theme. So in here, this is how it would look. So I think we'd want to adopt the as mind um, theme. Let's go back and let's click on source. So in here, we need three HTML files, one for the portal page, one for authentication error and for logout. So when you scroll down, he gives you a bit of description. He tells you the files that you need. You only need to select three. So if you want one for the user interface to just have a username and password, these are the three files you should download from the left pane. If you want the user um, for the captive portal page to give you an option to upload either a username and password or a token, like a voucher code, you can use the second one. Or if you just want the token, you don't want a username or password text box, you can just select these three, um, download these three files and edit it to suit your intended purpose. So for our example, we'll just want to use the token. So let's download these three files from the left pane. So you would select login token.html and this should open the code for you. So in here, we realize that the code has 768 lines and you can just download the file. So you click download raw file and it should download onto your virtual machine. The second file we would want to download is the error page to so error-token.com. HTML, you click on that and it should load the code. Okay, so once you have this file, you can also download that file. So the last file we'll download is the logout um, page, the HTML for the logout page. So you click on logout.html and you click download raw file. So these are the three main files we we'll import to change the look and feel of our captive portal. If you so wish, you can either edit the content in here and make some changes, tweak this um, HTML file before you download it. Or you can download it and use a text editor to edit the lines of code before you upload the file into your PFSense captive portal. Okay, so just before we configure our PFSense captive portal, we want to check the issues section to see if anyone had any issues with this template. So in here, there's one comment about sign won't continue after credentials are entered. So someone mentioned that once they use the login interface, nothing would happen after they click the sign in button of the captive portal login page. So what they added was value is equal to continue. Um, let's scroll a bit more down. So this was the original line of code we are looking at. That should be in the logging um, 
or a page or the HTML for the login page. And so you have to replace it by adding value is equal to continue. So we will do that before we, we import the template into our PSS captive portal. So what you'd want to do is to go into your downloads and for the login token HTML, you right click and choose open with text editor. And this should be found online. 743 or 753. So let's scroll all the way down and try to find this line of code. Alternatively, you may decide to search for that line of code. Okay, so on line 743, this is the line where um, you'd add that line of code. So if you look at what was said for the comment, you need to add um value is equal to continue and then leave a space after that so that will be for the login page let's apply a similar thing to the error page so for now let's click save current file and let's close this so we'll apply the same thing to the error page so double click on the error hyphen token let's scroll way down we should find a similar line of code so on line 744, we will add a similar thing. So after type is equal to submit, let's add the value is equal to continue. That should do the trick. So let's click on save and let's close this. So at this point, we can head into a PFSense captive portal page and make these um, additions or import these into our PFSense captive portal. Okay, so back into the captive portal, let's scroll down and under HTML page contents, let's upload the three files we've edited. So we go to browse, let's go to downloads and then choose login hyphen token for the login portal page content. And then for the authentication error page, let's go back, let's go to downloads and then let's choose the error hyphen token. And finally, for our logout page, let's go to browse, let's go to downloads, let's choose the logout HTML file. For authentication method, we can choose none. Our focus will be to allow users to access the internet simply with a voucher code that we will generate. So that will serve as our authentication method. So we don't need a radio server or any other form of authentication and you can click on save. At this point, you may receive an alert on top of your screen, which says you must log in to this network before you can access the internet. And this is an indication that the captive portal is operational. So you may click the open network login page to access the captive portal. On other virtual machines that are also connected to this internal network, you may try to open the browser and try to open any web page, you'll be redirected to this captive portal. So let's click on the open network login page. And once you click that, you realize that you will be redirected to the captive portal. So this is how the captive portal looks. In this case, we only have the token text box. We don't have the username password. You could use that if you prefer that. And in the next video, we'll look at how to configure vouchers so that this token text box will accept vouchers and authenticates users to use the internet. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.